Welcome to another video. Let's talk about what happens to a position function. So, suppose we have a function that describes the position of an object in space and suppose the position is determined by time, which means the object might be moving or not moving, but to make things nice, let's assume the object is moving. Consider a soccer player or consider your car. I think your car is going to do a better job in this analogy. So, the position of your car is determined by time because you're driving, you're traveling, right? Now, we can talk about the velocity at which your car is traveling by finding the change in position with time, or we say it's just dy dt, or we can write it as f prime of t. So one of those notations will represent velocity. We can also see the rate at which your velocity is changing if you're trying to get faster or you're slowing down, which we call acceleration or deceleration. And we can take the second derivative of this function. So we're going to have d2y dt squared or f double prime of t. Usually that's where we stop. We just know position, velocity, and acceleration, and we really don't care about the rest because, again, not everybody is a physicist or an engineer, but there's more to it. There's a lot more than acceleration. Let's get into the video. So I'm just going to jump quickly to where we're going to start. We're going to start from acceleration to the higher derivatives of the position function. So the first one, like I said, is velocity. And what the symbol for that is small letter v, and we say that that is equal to dy dt, and it is f prime of t. And we call this the change in position with time or we call it the rate of change, that's the meaning. Another way you can say the rate of change of position. Okay, now, what's the next thing we're gonna talk about? Acceleration, it is the change in velocity. It means you're going faster, or you're a soccer player, and you're trying to sprint to catch the ball before your opponent. So we're gonna say that acceleration, which is represented as small letter a, is the second derivative of the position function, which is d2y dt squared, which is written this way, f double prime of t. And it is change in velocity, in velocity with time. Or we say it's the rate of change of velocity. Okay, now, Your acceleration can also change. Now, let me tell you, the word is jerk. So you have velocity, acceleration, the next one is jerk. Not jerking, just jerk. That's the word. And it means the rate of change of acceleration. Imagine if your car had bad gas, okay? You put bad petrol in your car and it starts jerking. It's trying to accelerate, but the acceleration is not constant. It is slow and fast and quick change, slow change, because the gas is not, or the petrol is not burning well. So there's some jerking going on. Let's write the definition and I'll tell you how you know. It is just, the, the, the case is that the force that is being generated by the engine or the car or transmission, whatever you call it, is not constant. It is applying different forces or supplying different forces per time. So we can say that the next one, let's asterisk this, okay, um, the next one is going to be called the jerk. Small letter j, it is d3y dt and it is f triple prime of t. And this is called, so J is change, or let's call it rate of change of acceleration. And let me just show you a very simple equation to make you understand what the jerk of any object is. 
or the jerk of any motion. Here you have that from Newton's second law of motion. Yes, the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force. Remember, Newton's second law of motion. By the way, I know all three because of my name. So we have F equals MA. Now, if you want to know the rate at which this is changing, if you differentiate both sides, force can change, acceleration can change in the course of motion, but the mass of the object does not change in the course of the motion, okay? So, what happens is, if you differentiate this, dF dt is going to be m times dA dt. As you can see, dA dt is what we have here, this is equal to dA dt. See, acceleration is dV dt. So here it is dA dt and this is equal to mj. It is the mass times the jerk of the function. That is the rate of change of force with time. Okay, that's it. And a good example is you're playing and you're trying to dribble, you're changing, you're accelerating, you chase the ball, you get the ball, then you dribble. So remember that it is not just how fast you're accelerating, but the direction of acceleration is also counted as a change. Okay, so, because they're all vectors. Now let's look at the next one. This is the, we just marked this one. So, now, why is this important? When you talk designing things, you, you want to wonder how smoothly do robots do things. Robots do things more smoothly than humans would do them. They don't shake. We shake because we're being careful. But robots have these things figured out so that the jerk is zero. That is, the rate of change of acceleration is zero. There's constant acceleration. That's a smooth ride. You know, that's a smooth ride. Okay, so... Let's go to the next thing. After jerk, the rate of change of jerk of any object is called the snap. So when you jerk too much, you snap, okay? So we say that the snap, another word for snap is actually jounce equals, the symbol for that is small letter S and it is equal to d, dj dt, I'm going to write everything now, dj dt, which is the fourth derivative of y. We're going to write a d4y dt to the fourth, which is f of t. Okay, so it is the rate of change of jerk with time. So this is the rate so the question you want to ask yourself is, what do you think the rate of, of change of jerk with time should be? If you don't want anything to snap, if you want the snap to be zero, then you better not jerk at different rates because then you're going to snap. Well, if snap means what it means. But let's just go on. There are two more. Okay, so the next one which um, I really can't conceptualize because it's beyond my understanding. I just know what it is. I know that after you go beyond snap, if you take this derivative one more time, you get what you call a crackle, okay? And the symbol for that is C. Small letter C is going to be ds dt, which is equal to d5y dt. To the fifth. I'm going to stop there, just repeat the same thing. That's it. And the last one. And this is the rate of change of snap with time. Okay? Just as we wrote here. And the final one, which I think is the end of all motion. It is when the object pops. Because again, after you jerk and snap and crackle, well, where else would you go? You pop. Okay, so um, we say that the pop letter P is the rate of change of crackle with time, which is d6y dt to the sixth. Now, if you're a physicist or a, an engineer and you have used any of these things and you really can explain what it means, I know I can get to the point snap, but these two, I don't know. Sometimes on the airplane, when I hear the plane making those 
crackling sounds. Yeah, this is what I think of, like we're about to pop. But again, we never pop. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.